From Software's journey from obscure developer to AAA powerhouse has been a joy to watch. But what is next for From and us the fans? With the release of Shadow of the Erd Tree, I'm both incredibly satisfied and hungry for more. Will we get a sequel for Bloodborne? Will they jump into a new IP? Is there a secret multi-deal with Sony? In this video, we'll explore possible future ventures and fan-fueled speculations. Bloodborne remains one of From Software's most beloved titles, and fans have been clamoring for a sequel since its release in 2015. The gothic horror masterpiece has a devoted following, and the potential for a Bloodborne 2 is immense. However, From Software has been tight-lipped about returning to Yharnam, with Miyazaki frequently repeating that he would love to, but it's up to Sony. This is because Sony owns the Bloodborne IP, much like they own the Demon Souls IP, and are ultimately decision makers on what will happen next with these titles. My take on this is very similar to Demon Souls. As soon as the announcement came that the Demon Souls servers were to be shut down, I immediately called that this was making way for a remaster or sequel. This prediction of mine from December 2017, three months before the actual server shut down, came up exactly right with the remaster being done completely by Sony with zero from soft involvement in order to prop up the PlayStation 5 launch. So following a similar trend, I think it's possible that a Bloodborne remaster or sequel could be being worked on to coincide with the launch of PlayStation 6, which would be around 2028. A Demon's Souls sequel with no From Software involvement is also possible before that, because Bluepoint, owned by Sony, now has an engine that works perfectly with Souls. It only makes sense that they use it. But what about Bloodborne on PC? Yes, I think Bloodborne PC and Demon's Souls PC will happen. And they will happen just as sequels are announced, as the purpose will be to hook PC players and make them buy PlayStations that will have exclusivity over the sequels. I am really sure this will happen. It's all a matter of time. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice was an interesting departure from the Souls formula, focusing on precision combat. The game was very well received, like everything From Software does recently, and even won Game of the Year at the Game Awards 2019. While there hasn't been any official word on a sequel, the game's ending leaves a very clear path forward for a continuation of the story, and a Sekiro 2 could further delve into the mythos and mechanics that made the first game a standout. The more important part of this, however, is commercial success. The sales of Sekiro were relatively lukewarm with 2 million copies in 2019 and up to 5 million by 2020. The game gained traction and sales went up a lot thanks to Elden Ring, so it's now sitting at a very successful 10 million copies sold, but it's uncertain how the profit margins work when such a large percentage of those units were from sales, and now that any From Software project will be measured with an Elden Ring yardstick. 5 million DLC sales in 3 days. There's also the publishing rights to think about. Sekiro was published by Activision Blizzard, and it's unknown whether any further publishing rights were reserved. Activision is now owned by Microsoft, so this could create a block for a sequel as Microsoft has a focus on its own console that is not popular in Japan. With all of this, and given the myriad of projects that are now available to From Software, a Sekiro sequel is probably one of the least likely to materialize. I'm still hoping it does, but I probably wouldn't want it to delay production of something with more RPG focus. Dark Souls 3 was considered the conclusion of the Dark Souls saga, wrapping up the intricate and mysterious lore that spanned three titles. Despite this, the possibility of a Dark Souls 4 is a topic of endless speculation. While From Software has moved on to new projects, the demand for another Dark Souls game persists, particularly after we were treated to the incredible level design of the main legacy dungeon from the DLC in Elden Ring. I've been around long enough to remember when Halo, Mass Effect, Dragon Age, The Witcher, and so many other amazing trilogies were, well, trilogies. I remember the developers categorically calling them finished. I also remember the announcements of It's Back and how those turned out. I hope Dark Souls doesn't follow a similar fate, but I certainly think that the franchise could make a successful comeback, as there's incredible appetite for Souls content as seen by the multitude of Souls likes that have appeared over the years. Much like a Demon's Souls sequel, a Dark Souls 4 would get all the hype and more, simply because we cannot get enough of exploring the worlds from software creates. In terms of likelihood of this happening, I think it's pretty low. Not because it would not perform well, but simply because Elden Ring is now a bigger franchise, and there's no way that they are going to call it good at one game. Let's go there now. Elden Ring's success naturally leads to a discussion of a sequel or even a trilogy. What started like Big Dark Souls has now become Dark Souls Who, and I absolutely believe that this franchise is going to get the full AAA treatment of not only three games, but Netflix animations, books, comics, and everything they can possibly come up with. I wouldn't be surprised to see live-action Elden Ring or even a movie. We're at that level of success now. Considering the incredible sales numbers and the relatively tiny size of From Software and their budget when compared to other games that sell like this, 
This is truly a golden egg goose and it's already attracting big investors who are buying off Kadokawa to get more From software. Sony and Tencent bought 30% of From in 2022 and I am certain these investors will want to maximize what they can get from this new IP. The compound success of Shadow of the Erd Tree will also push for more Elden Ring, but we recently heard from Miyazaki in an interview with IGN saying, we don't currently have any plans for another Elden Ring DLC or a sequel. From Software, like most developers, have multiple projects at multiple stages simultaneously. Sekiro and Elden Ring were being developed at the same time, for example. Knowing this, From Software must be working on something right now, and if Miyazaki is saying there are no plans for Elden Ring 2, then it's not Elden Ring yet. This doesn't mean that development could not be started in a month from now, after the quarterly investor meeting when everyone finishes swimming in money. But unless Miyazaki is lying, which let's face it he could do, or be forced to do by NDAs, then From Software is working on something else. What could that be? From Software has always been innovative, often surprising fans with new IPs and unique gameplay experiences. Rumors have swirled about potential new projects, including collaborations with other publishers. For instance, there's been whispers about a sci-fi themed game, which would be a fascinating new direction for the studio. Additionally, partnerships with major publishers like Sony or Bandai Namco could result in exclusive titles or unexpected ventures. Given From Software's three-year development cycle, we should be getting a new alternate game in 2025, which could be a new IP, an explorative title like Sekiro, or a commission title in collaboration with Sony, such as a remaster or sequel for a Sony-owned IP. From usually saves their announcements for the Video Game Awards in December or for the Summer Games Fest, so if something is coming next year, we'll know by December. This means that you have many, many months to enjoy Elden Ring or revisit previous Souls titles, or you can take a detour to other games that are coming out. For me personally, I'll continue playing Elden Ring and making builds, but I'm going to share what I'll be trying out, and why so if you're interested in games to look forward to that you can check out in the meantime. While well, waiting for news on From Software's next move, I'm going to be checking out the following games. First up on our list is Black Myth Wukong, which comes out on August 20th of this year, which is just a couple weeks away. This is a boss rush type of game with smooth Sekiro style combat, and undisputably awesome deep dive into ancient Chinese myth. I played the game and thoroughly enjoyed what was shown at the time, so I'm very much looking forward to covering this. If you haven't seen, we already did a video on the lore of the game, and it should serve as a springboard to whet your appetite for more Black Myth Wukong content. Highly recommend checking out that video if you don't know anything about the story of the game. After this, we'll be taking a look at Dragon Age The Veil Guard, which is supposedly launching late in 2024, and I would not be shocked if we got a release date for this game at opening night live of Gamescom in just a couple weeks. Don't kill me, I just can't help myself. Dragon Age Origins is one of my favorite games of all time, and I have to see if this installment can live up to the series, which, let's face it, it probably won't. I know that there are questionable art choices and a lot of speculation about whether the game is politicized or casualized, but I'm reserving judgment until I can actually play it and see how it is. Hopefully we get a chance around Gamescom and I'll keep you guys posted about this. The next game to keep an eye out for is Kingdom Come Deliverance 2. Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 is a very unique game that will appeal to the medieval enthusiast of Souls. It's first person only, doesn't have multiplayer, and leans on the realistic side, but it shares discovery and mechanical mystery with the Souls franchise. This is a title that lets you feel development passion as you play and keeps surprising you with crazy outcomes for the smallest of actions or decisions you make. I think a lot of our audience is already looking forward to this one, but if you haven't tried the first, you probably want to go check it out as it's often on sale. I'll be having some Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 content from a private hands-on play session soon, and I'm very much looking forward to share my thoughts on the game so far with you all. Currently, we do not have a known release date, but I have a feeling we will probably get one very soon. And the next game on my list is Monster Hunter Wilds. A lot of people look at me funny when I try to explain to them that there's a huge overlap between Souls and Monster Hunter, but it is absolutely there. While they are very different games, they share an engaging stamina-based combat against epic bosses and the thrill of cooperative multiplayer encounters. Monster Hunter Wilds is looking amazing and more information will be coming with Gamescom, but you can try Monster Hunter World for a bargain nowadays, one of the few games to enjoy over 100,000 concurrent Steam players five years after release. There is no known release date from Monster Hunter Wilds as of yet, but I speculate with Gamescom and Tokyo Game Show just around the corner that it won't be long before we have one. And we also know that Lies of P is working on a DLC that's supposed to launch before the end of the year. We don't have a lot of information on this yet, or when the release date is exactly, but if you enjoyed Lies of P, which I did, look forward to that DLC as well soon. 
Besides these upcoming games, there are so many recently released titles that I'm sure many haven't had the chance to try them all out. Among my top recommendations for Souls-like I think you guys should check out are Lords of the Fallen, Remnant 2, and of course Lies of P. Remnant in particular is scheduled for another DLC in September, so I'll be playing that and covering it as well. So that wraps up our video on what From Software could be working on. As always, I'd love to hear what you guys are planning to do. Will you know life Elden Ring until the next game comes out? Do a full run of previous Souls games you haven't played? Maybe explore a completely different title and jump into like RTS? What's your gaming future look like? Let me know in the comments below.